Anu, V6 or 116, Sol, 29 degrees Leo, Luna, 5 degrees Libra, Dies Venetus, or Friday, August 21st, 2020, Air of Goddess, 1134 AM, GMT minus 5, Hour of Saturn. Do what thy wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. A primer of Thelemic Ecclesiastical Gnosticism dedicated to the clergy of the EGC. Authors, Sabazius, 10th degree, USGL of OTO, and Tao Helena. Part 2, the Gnostic Mass. Chapter 4, the Thelemic Calendar. But ye, O my people, rise up and awake. Let the rituals be rightly performed with joy and beauty. There are rituals of the elements and feasts of the times, a feast for the first night of the prophet and his bride, a feast for the three days of the writing of the book of the law, a feast for Tahuti, and the children of the prophet, secret, O prophet, a feast for the supreme ritual, and a feast for the equinox of the gods, a feast for fire, and a feast for water, a feast for life, and a greater feast for death. A feast for every day in your hearts and the joy of my rapture. A feast every night unto Nu and the pleasure of uttermost delight. Liber Al 2, 34 to 43. There are rituals of the elements and feasts of the times. The rituals of the elements are rites intended to generate particular forms of energy according to the nature. Will and magical formula of each of the five elements, fire, earth, air, water and spirit. Four of these may be elaborated as the feasts of the times held at the equinoxes and solstices of each solar year when the sun enters into each of the four cardinal signs of the tropical zodiac attributed to the four elements of fire, Aries, March, equinox, water, Cancer, June, Solstice, Air, Libra, September, Equinox, and Earth, Capricorn, December, Solstice. A feast for the first night of the prophet and his bride. The feast for the first night of the prophet and his bride is a commemoration of the first night Crowley spent with his first wife, Rose Edith Kelly. They were married in a civil ceremony at Dingwall on August 12, 1903. Although the wedding was not properly recorded until several days later, Rose later played an important role in the events surrounding the reception of the Book of the Law. The feast for the first night of the Prophet and his bride is to be observed on August 12 of each year. The date, August 12, 1903, Ereva Goddess at 3.30 p.m., read out as written, is Anu, M-M-M-M-C-M-L-X-X-V-I-I-I. -I -I. One nine. Soul eighteen degrees Leo, 
Luna, 3 degrees Aries. This Mokure, the day of Mercury, or a Wednesday. This year, that feast was held on Anu V6, or 116, Sol, 20 degrees Leo, Luna, 3 degrees Gemini, Dies Mokure, a Wednesday. Time is negative 5 GMT. A feast for the three days of the writing of the Book of the Law. The feast for the three days of the writing of the Book of the Law is a commemoration of the anniversary, the reception of the three chapters of Liber al Bel Legis in Cairo on April 8, 9, and 10, 1904. It is to be observed on April 8, 9, and 10 of each year beginning at high noon on each day. April 8, 1904, Erevo Goddess at 12 p.m. was Anu, 0, Sol, 18 degrees Aries, Luna, 29 degrees Capricorn, Dies Veneris, or, as it is today, a Friday, at 12 p.m. GMT minus 5. April 9, 1904, was Anno Zero, Sol 19 degrees Aries, Luna 11 degrees Aries, Dies Saturni at 12 p.m. GMT minus 5. April 10, 1904, Arab Goddess at 12 p.m. GMT minus 5 is Anno 0. Or Sifr. Sol 20 degrees Aries, Luna 23 degrees Aquarius, Dies Solis, or a Sunday. Next year, which is April 8, 2021, Erevo Goddess at 12 p.m. GMT minus 5 will be. Anno V7, 117, Sol 18 degrees Aries, Luna 5 degrees Pisces, Dies Jovis, or a Thursday, at GMT minus 5, or Central Standard Time. A feast for Tahuti and the children of the Prophet. Secret, O Prophet. This phrase is given as such in all three published versions of the Gnostic Mass. However, the Book of the Law 2.39 gives Child of the Prophet. Many groups prefer this usage in order to properly quote the Holy Book. A feast for the supreme ritual and a feast for the equinox of the gods. The feast for the supreme ritual, observed on March 20 of each year, is a commemoration of the anniversary of Crowley's successful performance of the invocation of Horus in Cairo, which brought about the opening, or which coincided with the opening of the new Aeon. Crowley actually began the invocation ceremony around 10 p.m. on Saturday, March 19, 1904, and completed it just after midnight. 
The result of the invocation came during the early morning hours of Sunday, March 20, the day before the March equinox, as the announcement that the equinox of the gods was imminent. Interestingly, there are exactly 22 days between the feast for the supreme ritual and the final day of the feast for the three days of the writing of the book of the law. The number 22 is significant within Sufi cosmology as it is a reference to Elias or the prophet Elijah, Eli Yahu. The feast for the equinox of the gods is a commemoration of the beginning of the new aeon on March 21, 1904, or of the commencement of a new magical formula. It is celebrated within the AA at each equinox. The time the intention of the ritual was set as it would have been in Chicago on March 19, 1904, Erevo Goddess at 3 p.m., which is seven hours behind Cairo, which at that time was 10 p.m., would be, and we assume the earth wasn't so differently moved, Anu, M, 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 C, M, L, X, X, V, I, 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 19. In Roman numerals, M equals 1000, C equals 100, and when you find a C before an M, you subtract 100 from 1,000. L equals 50, X equals 10, V equals 5, I equals 1, and then the Arabic numeral 19. So you have 5,978, and then you have 19. It's a cipher that I don't completely understand. Uh, Sol was 28 degrees Pisces, Luna 28 degrees Aries. Dies Saturni, or the day of Saturn. Saturday. The Sabbath. At this point, would have been on in Chicago, but completed in Cairo. A feast for fire and a feast for water. A feast for life and a greater feast for death. A celebration of the puberty of a boy, fire. Of the menarche of a girl, water. Of a birth and of life on the occasion of a death. A feast every day in your hearts in the joy of my rapture, a feast every night unto Nu in you, and the pleasure of uttermost delight. A name for ancient Egypt is Chim or Kim, and so chemistry arrives from that name. Speaking of Chicago, von.physics.illinois.edu asks and then answers, what is new in chemistry? 
And the answer, in short, it's about photon energy. The photon energy is the light frequency times Planck's constant, the smallest distance imaginable and still having a line. The frequency is often given the name Nu, a Greek letter which looks a lot like a V. Planck's constant is usually called H. Its value is about 6.626 times 10 hat negative 34 joules hertz joules over hertz this summary came from alphabets google end of chapter four anu v6 or 116 sol 29 degrees leo luna 5 degrees libra Dies Venetis or Friday, August 21st, 2020, Ervo Goddess, 12.10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Hour of Jupiter. Do what thy wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. Mystery of mystery dedicated to the clergy of the EGC authors Sabazius 10 degree USGL of OTO and Tao Helena part 2 the Gnostic Mass chapter 5 the Colettes the Sun the sun is a concrete, natural symbol of God, partakes of many of the traditional attributes of God, and is in fact identical with God from one point of view. The earth, which includes all tangible things, including our own bodies, is composed of the same substance as the sun. Annual and diurnal motion refers to seasonal and daily rhythms. Effulgence means glory, splendor, and power. Let the sun be an example to us. Sur af. The name of the Solomonic spirit of the sun enumerates to six, three score and six, and the sixth sephora is Tiferoth, Ra, Mentu, Osiris, Horus, Hephra, Dionysus, Priapus, Attis, Adonis, Damus. Apollo, Serapis, Abraxas, Nitra, Krishna, Christ, and many others are considered solar gods. Their differences depend on different aspects of the solar current, which embraces the concepts of sovereignty, the power of life, death, and resurrection, immortality, constancy within periodicity and civilization. The Lord. As the sun is visible and sensible, the Lord Hadid is not. Kether is hidden behind Tifereth. The sun shines down upon all of us. 
the Lord shines forth from within each of us. The moon, Ches Mude, the name of the Solomonic spirits of the moon, enumerates to three, six, nine. Three, six, nine equals nine times forty one. The ninth Sephora is Yesod, attributed to the moon. 41 is the numeration of Hebrew words meaning fecundity, mother, and divine majesty. With respect to the sun, the moon is feminine as the lady of night, as she receives the sun's light or creative energy. The monthly cycle of the moon renders her now visible and now invisible. Artemis, who is Diana, was goddess of the hunt as well as of the moon. The moon governs other nightly activities as well. The moon has long provided an agricultural clock relied upon by farmers and governs the tides, which are, of course, of interest to seafarers and which are reflected in the feminine mystery of the tides of blood. The Lady The feminine is classically receptive, but practically creative. The office of gladness, of the joy of incarnation, is active, not passive. The saints, let him look upon the cup whose blood is mingled therein. For the wine of the cup is the blood of the saints. Liber 4, 18, 12th Aether. This collect proclaims our historical current throughout its various phases. The italicized names represent the main thread of the current. These men were the keepers of the sacred flame, whether they knew it or desired it or not. In a personal sense, this collect represents the acknowledgement of our own magical currents, our own past lives, ancestors, teachers, and heroes. The brief portrait contained in part three are presented as an introduction to the lives, personalities, and works of the saints of the Gnostic Catholic Church. They are not intended as detailed biographies. Some of the saints are too obscure to provide us with more than brief speculative sketches, and the biographies of others such as Paracelsus, Bacon, Goethe, Wagda, Nietzsche, Rogan, Burton, and Crowley occupy volumes. The emphasis herein has been placed on the significance of each saint to the transmission and development of the Thelemic Gnosis. The significance of some saints is a result of their works, of others their life stories. In all cases, a list of the references used to prepare these portraits has been furnished for those who wish to investigate the saints more fully. Sainthood, in the context of the Lema, should not be confused with common notions or conventional Western theological conceptions regarding sainthood. There are several distinct notions of sainthood in Crowley's writings. In Liber Astarte, Crowley gives an implicit definition of a saint as one who has perfected his or her devotion to his or, or her deity. El Insan al Kamil. 
As examples, he gives St. Francis of Assisi, Sri Sabha, Sri Sabapati Swami, Abdullah Haji Shirazi, and St. Ignatius Loyola. In Liber 418, The Vision and the Voice, particularly in the 12th Aether, Crowley relates sainthood specifically to the degree of Magister Temple. The saint is one who has perfected his devotion to Babylon, Bene. While not actually mentioning sainthood, the Book of Lies, Libra Aleph and the Heart of the Master all provide lists of these all provide lists of those considered by Crowley to have served as great world initiators, Magistri Dimpli and Magi of the Great White Brotherhood of the Silver Star, sent to enlighten civilization and initiate historic periods. Chapter 7 of the Book of Lies gives the following list of those identified as Magistri Templi Lauzu Siddhartha Krishna Dahuti Moshe Dionysus and Mahmud Chapter 68 to 74 of Liber Aleph give this list of Magi Lauz, Gotama, Krishna, Dionysus, Tahuti, Moshe, and Muhammad. The Heart of the Master in the section titled The Initiation gives these Fushi, Lauz, Gotama, Zerdust, Zorast, or Zorast, Zorast, Zorastustra, Pythagoras, Dionysus, Osiris, Apollon, Apollonius of Diana, Plotinus, Jacobus, Borbundis, Lulensis, Mohammed, Sir Edward Kelly, and Christian Rosenkreutz. Helena Prachrovna Blavatsky is also identified as a sister of the Great White Brotherhood. The fifth collect in part five of Liber 15, the Gnostic Mass, defines the saints as those who have adored the Lord of life and joy, which is the might of man, and the essence of every true God that is upon the surface of the earth, and who have manifested the glory of this Lord might essence unto men. This definition is a somewhat broader one than that set forth in the vision and the voice, Thus, while the list begins with a roster of the Magi, similar to the list provided in the Book of Lies, Liber Aleph, in the Heart of the Master, it continues with a list of solar phallic gods and mythical heroes, followed by a list of poets, Gnostics, figures from the Grail Mythos, medieval conquerors, reformers, and opponents of papal oppression. Alchemists, mystics, magicians, and Rosicrucians, and those associated with the founding of the OTO and EGC, a very similar list identifying the ancient and modern chiefs of the OTO is set forth in Book 52, Manifesto of the OTO. The list contains 22 italicized names and excluding the recently added names of William Blake and Giordano Bruno and those of the post Crowley OHOs, 70 names total. 
The conspicuous lack of women's names in this list has resulted in considerable controversy. The use of the words sons and paternal in the closing of this collect is a clear indication that the lack of female names in this list was not an oversight on Crowley's part and that he intended this list to be a list of men. The reason for this is not certain, though it has been the topic of considerable speculation. There is some evidence that OTO policy at the time Lieber 15 was written forbade the divulging of the names of female members. See Book 52, Manifesto of the OTO, where the list of ancient and modern chiefs of the OTO concludes with the statement, the names of women members are never divulged. Some believe that the invocation of the saints of Liber 15 was intended to inform the office of the priest in his role as a male adorant of the priestess in her role as goddess incarnate. In his address to the Women's Conference in 1996, see The Magical Link, Fall 1997 Common Era, the patriarch Hamenaeus Beta described the Gnostic Mass as a celebration of the sexual polarities and their cosmic and natural interplay from a male perspective, having been written by a man. With regard to the list of saints, he said, it is a list of the small handful of men and man-gods who, in the opinion of the author of the Mass, understood the divinity of women, of woman. Someday, perhaps not soon, but who knows, a woman adept of the sovereign sanctuary were manifest a genius to compose a mass in which the female takes the more active role and the male the more passive. As with Shiva and Shakti in Hinduism, in which the deacon speaking for the priestess can claim communion with the women in history that have perceived the divinity of man. The Earth This collect may be viewed as the feminine counterpart to the masculine saints. Mother Earth is the source of life on whose surface cling the oceans and the atmosphere, and whose molten center radiates heat from within. As the sun radiates heat and light from above, pastors are shepherds and husbandmen are animal tenders. The Principles This is the last of the seven universal collects they can be grouped as follows. The sun and the Lord equals Yod. The moon and the lady, He. The saints equals Vav. The earth and the principles, He. Final. The earth and the principles equals He final with the traditional associations when taken in context with the symbolic correspondences between the following collects in the OTO. Man of Earth degrees, this collect may be viewed as symbolizing the zero degree. The phrase mysterious energy, triform, mysterious matter in fourfold and sevenfold division can explicate as follows. Mysterious energy, triform, represents the three gunas, sattva, rajas, tamas, and the three alchemical principles, mercury, sulfur, and salt. 
mysterious matter in four form division represents the four elements mysterious matter in sevenfold division represents the seven planets the 12 signs of the zodiac are combinations of the three principles and the four elements the 10 sephiroth are the seven planets added to the three principles in fact all 32 paths are constituted by the three the four and the seven birth this is the first of the four occasional collects they may be attributed to the letters of the tetra gramma don as the universal collex or to the letters of the word a u m g n to the first degree second degree third degree and fourth degree of o t o et cetera marriage this collect this collect refers to unions between one person and another but also to other unions such as with action a desire or an idea death Daeth, the end. Anu V6 or 116 after Cairo, Sol 29 degrees Leo, Luna 5 degrees Libra, Dies Venetis or Friday, August 21st, 2020, Era Vogaris. 12.33 p.m. Central Standard Time, Hour of Jupiter. Do what thy wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Mystery of Mystery Part 2, The Gnostic Mass Chapter 6, Symbolism of the Gnostic Mass Temple Geometry of the Temple The temple described in Liber 15 follows the pattern of the Tree of Life. The stele of revealing is stationed at Kether. The two pillars are stationed at Chukma and Bina. The priestess sits at the intersection of the paths of Gimel. The high priestess, Luna, and Daleth, the empress, Venus. The dais elevates the supernal triad, and the veil stretches across the abyss. The altar of incense is stationed at Tifereth. The font is stationed at Yesod, and the tomb is stationed at Malkuth. Note 1. Crowley actually states the following. Taking this altar as the middle of the base of a similar an equal triangle at the apex of this second triangle is a small circular font. This would place the font at a point between Yesod and Malkuth and would also place the tomb at a point considerably below Malkuth. We may reasonably assume that Crowley's statement contained in minor and an easily made error and that what he intended to say was probably something more like the following. Taking this altar as the middle of a similar and equal triangle, at the apex of the second triangle is a small circular font. The deacon's station is between the altar of incense and the font. In essence, at the intersection of the paths of Semech and Peh. 
which is the symbolic position of the magician during the performance of the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. The children are stationed at various points along the pillars of Mercury and severity during the course of the Mass. The proportions of the Tree of Life diagram are established. And if one dimension of the tree is known, all the rest may be computed. The Tree of Life is constructed by drawing for e equal collinear circles whose perimeters intersect each other's centers. The Sephiroth of the middle pillar are Sephiroth of the Pillars of Mercy and Severity, are located at points with circles. Again, the Sephiroth of the middle pillar are located at points where the circles intersect the central line, and the Sephiroth of the Pillars of Mercy and Severity are located at points where the circles intersect each other. The angles between the Sephiroth are, therefore, all either 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, or 120 degrees. The angle between Chukmah and Bina from the vertex of Kether is 120 degrees. Since the priestess is symbolically located at the intersection of the paths of Gimel and Daleth, she should ideally be seated between Chukmah and Bina, the two pillars. This would necessitate the pillars be aligned with the front edge of the altar, which is where the priestess actually sits. Placing the pillars in this position thus establishes the ideal physical dimensions of the entire temple. Assuming the stele is placed at the back of the altar, it could also be located farther behind the altar, which would increase all the dimensions computed below. Its distance from the line connecting the centers of the two pillars would be three feet. Given that the pillars Chokmah and Bine are 120 degrees apart from the stele, Kether, one may compute their ideal distance apart. D equals 2 times 3 feet 10, 120 degrees divided by 2 equals 10.392 feet or approximately 10 feet, 4 and 11 16th inches. This particular distance may not seem very significant at first, but it establishes the ideal distance from the front of the high altar to the center of the altar of incense at exactly 9 feet. The ideal distance from the center of the altar of incense to the center of the font at exactly six feet, and the ideal distance from the center of the font to the tomb at exactly six feet. The ideal distance from the tomb to the stele is therefore exactly 24 feet. The High Altar In the east, that is, in the direction of Boleskin, which is situated on the southeastern shore of Loch Ness in Scotland, two miles east of Foyers, is a shrine or high altar. Its dimensions should be seven feet in length, three feet in breadth, 44 inches in height. It should be covered with a crimson altar cloth on which may be embroidered fleur de lis in gold, or a sun blaze, or other suitable emblem. Liber 15 We have already seen how the proportions of the altar 
determine the dimensions of the temple, and in chapter 6, how the altar is sized to be of the dimensions of a typical Egyptian sarcophagus. In addition, the numbers 3 and 7 add to 10, and 3, 7, and 10 are the numbers of the three sephiroth of the tree of life with distinctly feminine magical images. Bene, Netzech, and Malkuth. Graphically, the fleur de lis is composed of an upright stroke flared at the top which penetrates a figure composed of two lengths curves, which penetrates graphically the fleur de lis is composed of an upright stroke flared at the top, which penetrates a figure composed of two lengths curves. The conjunction of these two basic graphical elements produces a single three-fold figure emblematic of a trinity in unity Hargrave Jennings Note 2 The Rosicrucians Their Rites and Mysteries J. C. Hutton London 1870 reprinted by Health Research Mook Lumne Hill California 1966 In the Rosicrucians Their Rites and Mysteries provides an interesting and complex symbolic analysis of the fruit de lis. Neither pillar or obelisk is entirely black or entirely white. Typically, in keeping with Golden Dawn tradition, the pillars or obelisks would be constructed such that the one placed to the north of the altar would be predominantly black and the one placed to the south of the altar would be predominantly white. To emphasize the symbolism of yin and yang, and of chokmah and bine. However, a photograph of the Agape Lodge altar dating from the 1940s shows black and white obelisks to the right and left of the altar respectively. It is possible that the photograph captured an error made in setting up the arrangement because Sor Merrill maintained that the white obelisk was always placed to the right of the altar for masses at Agape Lodge. However, based solely on the text of Libra 15, it would not be unreasonable to construct the obelisk such that they both have equal amounts of black and white. The three steps of black and white squares may be seen as symbolizing the three grades of man of earth, lover, and hermit, or three horizontal paths of the tree of life. Pe, Mars, the tower, Teth, Leo, Lust and Daleth, Venus, the Empress, or the first three regular steps. The phrase dais of three steps suggests that the dais, meaning the platform supporting the high altar, is constituted by the three steps. Therefore, ideally, the steps would extend the entire length of the platform at the top of the platform would be continuous with the topmost of the three steps. The black and white squares may be seen as symbolizing the interplay of primal opposites. It is now the hour of Mars. The super altar. Above it is the super altar at whose side is the stele of Reveille in reproduction, with four candles on each side. Below the stele is a place for the Book of the Law, with six candles on each side of it. The 
Below this again is the Holy Land, with roses on each side of it. There is room in front of the cup for the paten. On each side, beyond the roses, are two great candles. A super altar is the Masonic term for what is known in ecclesiastical terminology as a reed table or radin, which is a structure raised above an altar. At the back, for supporting a pitcher or bas relief, vases, candles, and ornaments. In the Roman Church, a reed table can consist of anything from a standing sculpted structure many times the size of the altar itself. For our purposes, the super altar should provide at least three distinct levels. One for the stele at the top, one for the book of the law in the center, and one for the cup and the paten at the bottom. The surface The surface of the altar itself may be used for the lowest level. The candles and roses may be placed on the same shelves as the objects they are to flank, or they may be placed on subsidiary shelves. Therefore, a total of two, three, five, or seven steps or shelves would be appropriate. The stele should be mounted high enough as to be visible above the priestess's head when she is seated upon the altar, and there should ideally be no symbol or image higher than the stele. The stele of revealing is the funeral tablet of Ankh of Nkhuzhu, a priest of Manthu who lived in Thebes during the late 25th dynasty of ancient Egypt around 725 before the Common Era. Crowley and his wife, Rose, encountered this artifact labeled as Stele 666 in the Bulak Museum of Cairo shortly, before, shortly after the equinox of the gods in March 1904 era Vogadis. The encounter was one of several important events leading to the reception of the Book of the Law on April 8, 9, and 10, 1904, Era Vulgatus. See Book 4, Part 4. According to Aleister Crowley's mythic story, Across the Gulf, Ankh of Nahunsu was responsible for ushering in the Aeon of Osiris. Crowley assumed the magical identity of the dead man, Ankh of Nahonsu, as the living prophet of the Aeon of Horus, the deliverer of the Book of the Law. The stele thus represents the oracular connection of the Book of the Law and the law of Thelema with the archaic energies of ancient Egypt, transformed and renewed in accordance with the cyclic pattern of aeonic evolution. See for reference Atu 20 and corresponding passages in the Book of Thoth. The arrangement of the implements on the super altar and high altar recapitulates the tree of life. In this case, the stele atop the super altar is at Kether. The Book of the Law, as Logos, is one step below at Tephereth. The cup is at Yesod, and the space for the paten in front of the cup is at Malkuth. The priestess completes this tree when she places the paten on the altar in front of the cup. It may also be noted that the stele, book, and cup correspond to the three principal elements of the lamen of OTO. The eye in the triangle, the descending dove, and the holy Ron, respectively. 
all five elements or tatwas are symbolically represented on the altar and super altar, air or vayu, by the medium of their fragrance, is represented by the roses, water or apas, is represented by the fire. Water or apas is represented by the cup. Fire or tejas or tijas is represented by the candles. Earth or prithivi is represented by the paten and hosts. Spirit or akasha is represented by the stele or by the bell. There are a total of 22 candles on the super altar corresponding to the 22 paths of the tree of life. Thus, there are 11 candles on each side of the altar. The stele has 8 candles surrounding it, and there are 8 paths above the abyss, 8 clauses in the creed, and 8 letters in the name Baphomet. The Sephiroth, Chokmah, and Bine, which flank Kether, as the eight candles flank the stele, are numbered two and three, respectively, and eight equals two to the third power. Also, eight equals Cheth, equals 418, equals Abrahad Abra, the word of the Aeon. Traditionally, at least two candles are required on an altar of the Roman Church, and two candles were always placed on the ritual tables of the Cathars and of the Donyas Gnostic Church. They probably signified originally the two celestial luminaries, the sun and moon, according to Hargrave Jennings in Live Lights or in live lights or dead lights. John Hodges, London, 1873, quoted in Godwin, Jocelyn, The Theosophical Enlightenment, Sunni Press, Albany, 1994. The two candles on the altar symbolize the cleft through the, which the Son of Righteousness appears. The two great candles on the super altar of the Gnostic Catholic Church corresponds to these two traditional candles. They may also correspond to the pillars of mercy and severity, and since they are a total of 22 candles on the super altar, to any reciprocal pair of Hebrew letters or paths, such as Elif and Tov, Ayin and Nun, or Kof and Shin, The twelve candles surrounding the Book of the Law may correspond to the twelve signs of the zodiac surrounding the sun and the paths which designate them. The roses on either side of the cup indicate that Yesod is of the nature of air as well as of the moon. They may also represent the Sephiroth of Hod and Netzek. The rose is attributed to Netzek and Libra 777, or Gamma Gamma Gamma. And roses are a traditional symbol of love, which makes them appropriate for framing the cup. In any case, it is a very ancient tradition to place sweet-smelling flowers, especially roses, upon a sacred altar the color of the roses is not specified. Red roses are usually preferred, but it would also be possible to vary the color of roses used according to the season or the occasion. Of the officers of the mass, the priest, a male officer, when all the officers are considered collectively, the priest may be attributed to the yod of Tetra Grama Thon. And the alchemical principle of sulfur, the role of the priest is analog analogous to that of the higher fat in the Golden Dawn system. 
the word priest derives ultimately from the Greek word presbyteros, meaning an elder. The lance. The lance should be straight and at least two thirds the height of the priest. W. T. Smith's lance was several inches longer than he was tall. Note 5. W. T. Smith served as priest and was the master of Agape Lodge during Crowley's life. Ideally, it should have a wooden or metal shaft and a metal head. Vestments. We recommend that each officer's vestment include a plain white robe or gown with a colored robe, mantle, chasuble, or dalmatic worn over it, red and gold for the priest, blue and gold for the priestess, yellow for the deacon, and black and white for the two children. Vestments of all officers should be donned ceremonially before the Mass, after ceremonial ablutions. All officers took a bath and meditated for a time before commencing the Gnostic Mass at Agape Lodge. From Crowley's Not the Life and Adventures of Sir Roger Bloxham, Robes for the Priests, Albs, Amices, Dalmatics, Chasubles, Rochers, Copes, Birettas, all things canonical and lovely these doth. He buy and sell, and his whole soul is ornamented by his love for the figurative mystery of these holy vestments. For it seemeth, as I dream, that the priest is to the Most High God, as is a woman to her lover, that his raiment and apparel are even as the silks and fine linens of laces of a courtesan, which she adorns herself withal, that she may make her lover mad with love. And the incense? Oh, a surety it is. Then he being made God by the passion of God that floodeth him, transmitteth God to bread and wine, transmuteth them again to God. Then eateth and drinketh he that God, even again as a woman receiveth of the lover the fluid and solid substance of his being, and thus being made God once more, ex infero, he transmitteth upward that Godhead by the transmutation of these received elements into strength of body and spirit that exalting forth out its new divinity in praise and thanksgiving to the All-Father. I would also take ye, I would also that ye take note how bread and wine be adorned for the priest in golden pattern and chased chalice. Behold, then how complete and perfect is this true image of true life. And is not our Father, the Son, the giver of all life, adorned with glory of rays? The priestess, a female officer, when all the officers are considered collectively, the priestess may be attributed to the He of Tetra Grammaton and the alchemical principle of salt. The role of the priestess is analogous to that of the Herios in the Golden Dawn system. See for reference Atu 3, see for reference Atu 2, 3, 4, 8, and corresponding passages of the Book of Thought. The priest and priestess together represent the grade of hermit.
Some have said that the role of the priestess is passive and subordinate to that of the priest. This is simply absurd. As any attentive observer of the Gnostic Mass will realize, the priestess does have fewer lines than the priest, but the importance of a role is not to be judged based on word count. And any role that includes such active gestures as, for example, the creation of a holy temple from an ordinary room, the creation of a holy priest from an ordinary man, and the invocation of the serpent flame by the great oration behind the veil, can hardly be characterized as passive. There are times when the priestess assumes a receptive role during the performance of the Mass, but the same can be also said of the priest. For instance, when he is being purified and consecrated, the officers of the Gnostic Mass can be seen either as aspects of each individual or as individual persons. In each case, the work performed in the Gnostic Mass is the result of their combined, cooperative, harmonious efforts, unlike the simple charging of a talisman. The Gnostic Mass does not represent the effort of an individual magician imposing his will through the medium of a passive first matter, assisted by servants in the Gnostic Mass. No single officer can correctly be characterized as the operative officer. Each officer has his or her own tasks to perform, and all these tasks are essential to the accomplishment of the work of the Mass. The Sword See Liber Al 3.11 Book 4, Part 2, Chapter 8, and the chapter on the magic sword in Book 5. Of Regardes, the Golden Dawn. Crowley usually refers to the sword as an emblem of the rational mind, parallel to the symbolism of the dagger in the Golden Dawn system, in the particular context of its use in the Gnostic Mass. However, it may be useful to note that the Golden Dawn system attributes the sword to Gbura, being a weapon of war forged from iron steel, the metal of Mars. Thus, may also be seen as a symbol of the power of iron the initiatory force of Mars, and Ra, Hor, Hoit, the Red Girdle. See Liber Al 160, the five-pointed star with the circle in the middle and the, red, and the circle is red. The five-pointed star with the circle in the middle and the circle is red. The five-pointed star can be seen as a geometric representation of the human body, with the five points representing the head, outstretched arms, and legs. The deacon, an officer of either sex, when all the officers are considered collectively, the deacon may be attributed to the valve of Tetragrammaton, analogous to that of the hegemon, and also the Keruks of the Golden Dawn system. The deacon's place is on the path of Semech, the union of opposites, hence the deacon is androgynous and may be of either sex. The deacon takes the place of the narrator in the drama of the Mass. He, she is the bearer of the Logos, the book, and to him are attributed the Hermetic gods, the Huti, Awes, etc. He represents the grade of lover. The word deacon derives ultimately from the Greek word 
diaconos, meaning a minister or servant. The two children, the positive child and the negative child, are officers of either sex. Despite the name children, there is no specific maximum age specified for these officers in Libra 15. Nor is there any indication, nor is there any indication in Libra 15 that these officers are in any way optional. Therefore, when it is po impossible or inappropriate for minors to serve in these offices, then adults should serve in them. But only such adults as are able to lay legitimate claim to the title of child by virtue of having or having once had a mother. For more information on this point, reading or watching Brave New World by Aldous Huxley is helpful. When all the officers are considered collectively, the children may be attributed to the He final of Tetra Grama Thon. The roles of the children are analogous to those of Da Dukus and the Stolistis of the Golden Dawn system. See for reference Atu 6 and 19 and corresponding passages of the Book of Thoth. The children represent the dual child Heru Raha, the positive Horus Rahohot, and the negative Har Bokratis, Hor Bar Krat. In keeping with the He final attribution, the children may also be viewed as the priest and priestess of the mass of the future and are reflected in the two spheres depicted in Octal 15. According to Sora Merrill, the boys. Dionysus, Hansi Carter, Le Hirsig's son, and Hermes, Howard Shumwe, Nin Et's son, served as the children in the Gnostic masses, or bits thereof, that were celebrated at Cephalu. However, no appropriate minors were available at Agape Lodge to fill these offices, and the lodge officers decided to omit the offices altogether, rather than use adults. In the Gnostic Masses celebrated at Agape Lodge, it was the deacon, rather than the children, who offered the elements of communion to the people. In this case, we differ with Agape Lodge tradition. As mentioned before, there is no indication in Libra 15 that these offices are optional, nor is there any indication of the precise maximum age of the people serving in these offices. We have found through years of expertise, we have found through years of experience that adults can fill these offices very effectively and rewardingly. We believe that an important aspect of symbolism, as well as of magical balance, is lost when the offices of the children are omitted, and we recommend that these offices be filled whenever there are enough people present to make this possible. This is, in fact, the current official policy of EGC in the USA. We have heard that some groups have had difficulty complying with this policy because people in their areas seem to feel that these offices are beneath their dignity. Even as bishops, we have always felt honored, and so has the reader, to serve in these roles. Parfum. 
incense. See Liber Al 159 and 325. In Book 4, Part 2, Chapter 16, incense of Abra Milan is particularly appropriate for the Gnostic Mass. It consists of four parts frankincense, two parts storax, liquid umbar resin, benzoin is a satisfactory substitute, and one part lignum aloes, aloes wood, cedar or sandalwood are satisfactory substitutes. The Congregation the people. The congregation represents the grade of man of earth in the again the congregation the people the congregation represents the grade of man of earth Thus completes chapter 6 of part 2 on page 93.